Thank you so much for being here. We met in Israel at the Noah Tel Aviv. And if you think eating is easy, it's going to be analyzed in a way you have never seen it before because you bring big data to, yeah, for me, the most important thing in life, food. <laughs> it is. I thought it was something else, Marco. <laughs> you didn't tell me that. Uh. Hi, everyone. Um, so a big transition from travel to food or back to food because there was a lot of food before. My name is Alon Chen. I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, TasteWise. TasteWise is a consumer intelligence platform helping food brands really understand what is the future of food or basically what do consumers want and what will they want in the future. So food is a massive industry, $5 trillion industry. Think of the restaurants, the suppliers, the grocers. All of them are there for two things, right? We all have to eat and we all love to eat, or most of us at least. In the past couple of decades, the food industry hasn't changed a lot. But in the past couple of years, everything is changing, right? And it's changing mostly because consumers are changing and they have new preferences and needs and, and motivations. Time, for example. How many of us are being managed by our schedules and calendars? Even quality time with kids and with our beloved ones is, you know, is a slot on the calendar. And as a consequence, we order a lot more food online. It's more than a $100 billion industry, and it's the fastest growing one. We eat out a lot more. The average consumer is, is spending more than 50% of their budget on food and beverage in restaurants or in delivery, so they're not cooking at home. And obviously, technology is a big enabler in all of that. When it comes to health, 79% of millennials say they want better and healthier food, and they're spending a lot more money if they get this food. And so when everything is changing, obviously the industry also must change. And companies that really want to keep up with the pace of what consumers want need to innovate. And indeed, the, the big corporates, the food technology uh, platforms, all of them are spending tens of billions of dollars on insights and analytics and artificial intelligence that helps them really understand the future. However, they're wasting a lot of their budgets on things like surveys. You go to 100 people in the mall, you give them a $100 voucher, and you ask them questions that they really don't know what the answer is, right? What would you like to see as your next uh, yogurt flavor? And they're basing a lot of you know, their entire uh, production lines on it. Retail analytics. It used to be that the retail analytics, what we buy in the supermarket, in a grocer, is a great indicator for what is going to be next. But today, as I mentioned, in the US, it's already less than 50% of the spend, and it's the least innovative segment. So if you're spending you know, tens of millions of dollars of your budget on it, what will you get? And last but not least, even the most sophisticated platforms, tech players that we've seen, they're using a lot of data and analytics based on their in-house data to predict what is going to be the next, white, uh, next big white space. So in-house data for our external space not really makes sense. And so um, really the results are pretty miserable. A lot of the efforts, the production, the planning, the execution, the marketing goes into a big, you know, miserable failure of 85% is actually quite, uh, um, quite optimistic, it's more like 90%, and it applies not only for the CPGs, it also applies for food brands and restaurant chains that are spending a lot of money on products and solutions that are too late, they don't answer any demand, and they don't really address any of the cravings. So really the key to break the cycle is to be a lot more agile, and it's to be a lot faster, innovate more, produce more variations and see what's coming up. And anyways, I wanted to have like a pride, you know, week uh, photo, so I wanted something diverse there. Um, and so the good news is that when you get to think about it, the data is already there. All you need is the technology that will connect the dots and will give you the insights and the predictions that you need. And that's what we're doing at TasteWise. We're basically taking a, a diverse set of, the, of data sources, and we apply the most cutting-edge AI to be able to help food brands and food technology platforms to see what is coming next. 
We're taking the billions of images and conversations that are being discussed every month about eating and drinking. We have uh, the largest data sets of restaurant menus to see what is new, what is happening, what are chefs innovating, what are consumers really liking. We have more than two million recipes, and more importantly, we're doing recipe analytics. So basically trying to see what is really on the mind of the consumers that when they're walking into their kitchens and opening up the fridge, what kind of things, they're what are the jobs to, to be done? What are they trying to solve? Is it dinner for the kids? Is it a condition they have that they need to find a solution for? Maybe anti-inflammatory um, recipes? And, sorry, and, and basically we bring all of that into one platform that really is giving the food brands the future of the industry. Let's take, for example, you know, the bowl. Um, any restaurant you see today in big cities, they're serving everything in a bowl. And it's, you know, it's great to know that there's a trend called the bowl, but what you really need to understand is that you must be granular, and you need to know what is it that consumers already add to the bowl, bowls that they don't have at re in uh, restaurants, and what is it that they eat in restaurants that they can't find at home that they really want to have in their bowl. Another example, is really all the greatest and the biggest uh, diets out there. So there's a lot of discussion around veganism, right? And it's, it's amazing for humanity that we are discussing sustainability issues and we're uh, getting into a lot more plant-based protein. But when you are a food brand and you really only stick to the high-level trend of veganism and you don't realize that low-carb and keto are actually taking over the category, you're going to be really behind. The cool thing, and really my uh, favorite part, is that TasteWise is so smart that it really is able to tell you not only what people are eating, but also get to the deeper motivation of why. And when you're thinking about innovation, getting to the why is sometimes more important than getting to the what, right? To, and when you're looking at Ube, um, check it out online, Ube is a purple yam, it's Filipino, and it's important to understand that people love it because it's sweet, it's natural, it's exotic, and it's a colorant. So it looks beautiful on their Instagram uh, pages. And when you know that, you can think about the next thing that's going to be the biggest hit. Cauliflower rice, um, um, cauliflower rice uh, or cream cheese, one of the biggest, you know, uh, fastest rising uh, ingredients out there. And you say, wait, why is cream cheese going up? Why do people search for cream cheese on my food delivery app? But when you realize that they're searching for cauliflower rice and cream cheese because they're searching for a low-carb or keto uh, solution because they're on a new diet, then all you need to do is create the next virtual restaurant, the ghost kitchen, and you might want to call it the Kitoria. And it might only be temporary. It might only be for a year or two, but you can capture a lot of the revenues and a lot of the gap in the market. So, Basically, um, I'm super proud to say that we're already working on all, all these use cases with the leading food brands, hospitality companies, and also um, some of the uh, food delivery platforms in the world on solving some of these use cases and making sure that they know what is coming uh, next and that they do understand what consumers need to predict the future of food. Thank you all, and uh, let's have a better food industry. Okay.